Hello everyone, good morning. Sunday Adelijah here. My iPad was trying to mess up this morning, but uh, thank God, God helped us. And that light kind of, is it? It's like there's a light there that is kind of disturbing, right? I think I've got to go and put that light up. Is it better? No, it's not, is it? I don't think that light is better. I think I might need to close the entire thing. Is it better a little bit? Is it a little bit better? The light is not good, right? I think it's not so good too. Let's see. Still it's not so good, right? The quality is not so good, right? Okay, let's think about this. Anyway, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know what's wrong with that light. But, uh, yeah, the quality is not... So impressive. Let me see if I could do something about it. I don't know if it's better or not, but we had bad. I have not. I'm not well prepared this morning. I guess. Well, welcome everybody. I hope the most important thing is that you can hear me at least. <laughs> the the light in is not so good today for some reason, but. Uh, <laughs> Mario, why are you saying I can't see? I hear you. That's good enough for me. Okay, please let's go look for our. Let's go look for our our share button, and let's go share the link. Okay, maybe I should. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should just uh, move to another. I think this is even worse, huh? I think this is not better. This might be even worse. I don't think this is better. Is it better? I'm not sure this is really better, is it? Is it better at all? I'm not sure it's better this way. Maybe it was better that way. It's worse now, huh? Is it worse? I think it's worse. I think it's worse here. When I go back to where I'm used to, it might be better here. It might be better here, I think. Might be better here a little bit. Okay. Never mind, never mind. 
You know, I, I am my own. Uh, I'm my own operator and director and everything. I'm. I am all in one. <laughs> All in one wonder. <laughs> uh, wow, wow, wow. Well, I'm going to continue the topic that I started earlier on. Answering tough and difficult questions about God. So, uh, so if you can go and if you can go and, um, yeah, please go share the link. If you have shared the link, then let's start. Let's start. I keep on, I keep on with my difficult, I mean, tough and difficult questions about God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bless this transmission today. I pray that you bless everybody that's watching us. I pray that you minister to everyone. You will speak to us in a unique way. You will answer our questions and you will illuminate our minds to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The question I want to answer today is, if God loves us and is a lo if God is a loving God and he loves us, shouldn't he take care of me without asking of him? If God is a loving God, and he loves me, and he loves us, why should we beg him? Why should we always have to ask him? Why do we have to pray to him and beg him to take care of us? Well, that shows that the argument that I'm having and the point that I'm making is right. That the reason why we pray shouldn't be to ask something or the other for ourselves. You know, I think that logic and that reasoning is correct. God is love. And that's exactly what Jesus was trying to communicate to us. Jesus said that your father knows these things. All those things that you are worried about, all those things that you are trying to pray about and you are you know, begging God to do for you, God says he already knows about them. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 talks, talks to us about that. In Matthew chapter 6, I'm opening it here, verse 7 and 8, it says, When you pray, don't babble on and on and with repetitive words as people of other religions do, as the Gentiles do. Don't babble into multiple words as the Gentiles do. It is the Gentiles that go to pray and their motive in prayer is you know, to just make sure that they get what they need. That's why they're going to pray, 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 pray every day, five times. No, I don't think, think five times. But anyway, they just keep on going to do offering and all that. So, but G Jesus said, but when you pray, you should be different. You don't use vain repetitions as the Gentiles do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So, which means that, when we prayer is not, if God really loves us, a prayer is not supposed to be a means that we come to meet our needs. And what he's saying is, be ye not therefore like them, for your father knows what you have, what you have need of before you ask him. So Jesus is actually telling us here that that logic is right. That why are we praying all the time for things? Why are we bothering God? Why are we going to, you know, always focus on Receiving something on praying. Why do we need to pray if God is a loving God? But this is exactly what Jesus is saying here. For, um, six, Matthew 6, 8. He says that you don't need to pray and be, repeat, be repetitive. Keep on coming and praying for one and the same thing all the time. So, But you know what? The problem we will have today as Christians, because we have been taught so wrong, is that what do I pray about then if I don't pray for my needs? What, why do I pray then? What? What is the... what? 
How can I pray? What are the things that I should pray for? What do I pray for them if there are no needs? That is the problem. So if so, it means that it is need that is driving you to God. So you are actually worshiping your need. You are not worshiping God. You are actually praying for your needs, but I mean to your needs, but not to God. You are actually it's actually your need that is your God. It's actually your need that is your Lord. You have an idol, and that is your need. It is you. So if you are go, if you don't have anything to pray for, if you are not going to pray for needs, then it means that you don't need God. So you are not going to prayer for God. You are not going to, you know, prayer to seek him, to know him, to discover him. He is not the reason behind your prayers. It's not the reason behind your, 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 your religiosity. So your religiosity is because of you. This is exactly what Jesus is trying to, you know, you know get rid of from the Gentiles, I mean, from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But now it's not just the Sadducees and the Pharisees that are doing this. Christians are doing this. People who say they are believers in Jesus Christ, people who say they, they, they are followers of God, they are practicing paganism right in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was teaching this to, to the religious Jews. And, but we today are more religious than the religious Jews. So Jesus is saying that we, the reason we go to pray, we go to pray is not to beg God to do things for us. It's not because we want, you know, it's not because God does it. Because the way we pray sometimes, we come to prayer as if God is not aware of our needs. You know, but Jesus is trying to tell us here that God already knows of your needs. God is already aware of your needs. So don't, you know, don't, they don't, if you are coming to God to try to make him be aware of your needs, then you don't know God. If you are coming to God to try to convince him and to try to, you know, you know really, you know, tell him about what's going on, then you don't really know God. If you are, you know, coming to God, you know, because you want to really let him know about your problem, then you don't know God. Because God is God. God is all omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is all powerful, all knowing. God knows all about you more than your words could ever, ever even, you know, tell. More than your mouth could ever tell. So that's why Jesus is saying that is not supposed to be what should be driving us in prayers. But the Bible says, when you pray, enter into your closets and when, church, when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy father. So God, prayer, according to Jesus, should be a relationship between father and son, father and daughter. Pray to your father. Go and meet your father. What does it mean, pray to your father? Talk to him as a father. That is God's understanding. That's Jesus' understanding of prayer. You know, build relationship with him. That is Jesus' understanding of prayer. Go and experience his presence. That is Jesus' understanding uh, uh, of prayer. Go and love on him. That is Jesus' understanding of prayer. Go and, and, and uh, find out his, 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 you should go and find out about his plans for your life and for the world. Not to go and make him find out about what's going on with you. He already knows He's, he's, he already knows what's going on with you more than you even know what's going on with you. He is already aware of the problems you want to tell him more than you are aware of them. But you need to be aware of what he is thinking. You need to be aware of his plans concerning your life. You need to be aware of the, the his strategy that you could apply and use. You need to be aware of the wisdom he has that you could take from him. You need to be aware of the strategies that he has that you could take from him. So you need to be going to him to learn from him, to hear from him, to gain directions from him, to see what he would do, what he is doing. You are the one who is in need of knowing what he is doing. So it's not, you know, you trying to go and tell him what he, he doesn't know or what he needs to know. You see, we think that prayers is about us talking to God about what's going on. <laughs> you know, you, we, we are not the ones to tell him what's going on. He knows what's going on. You know, but when you go to him, go and love on him. Go and, you know, go and open up to him. You know, just go and in a trusting relationship with him. Go and, uh, you know, go, go and pr prove your love and your trust to him. So when you go into that room, he says, enter into the room, shut up the door behind you. Why shut up the door? Shut up all problems. Shut up all distractions. Shut up all you know, all worries, shut off all, uh, 
you know, all kind of things that are distracting you, that are, you know, overwhelming you. And shut off all the distraction from friends, from people as well. Shut off the whole world with all its troubles and its vanities and its frivol frivolous frivolousness. Shut out everything and just be alone with God. Why, why is that important? That is emphasizing intimacy. That open your door, close your door, you know, be alone with him. He's talking about intimacy. God desires intimacy in prayer more than everything, more than anything else. If you could attain that, uh, that, uh, that, that level of intimacy, you will be able to solve someone you are intimate with. You'll be able to solve the problems of your, of your problems or challenges easy. Even if you need to talk to him, because sometimes in relationship, you just need to, you know, you just need to speak out. You just, especially women know what I'm talking about. You just need to be able to pour out your heart. You just need to be able to pour out your heart and just share with him what's going on. And it does, it's not because he doesn't know, but it's just because you want to just lift, you know, release the burden to him. You want him to take over. You want him, you know, when you really love somebody and you know somebody loves you and cares for you, you know, then you can open up to them. You can, you know, share with them what's going on in your life. You can, not because you are praying like some regimented and, you know, you're religious and, or, you know, organized prayer that say, okay, how, you know, this is the way you say this, the word you put first, this is the word you put second. No, we're talking about relationship, a trusting relationship, a loving relationship. When you just want to share your heart with him, when you just want to pour your heart to him, when you just, you know, want somebody to understand you. And you know what? No matter how much people could understand you, nobody will ever able to understand you like him. So that's what he's talking about. Close your doors. Close the door. Shut off the door. Shut off everything. Let it just be you and him. So even that idea of shutting up, shutting down everything, you know, close the door, entering into a place of privacy, intimacy. Even that privacy alone, even that 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 situation of just alone, just being alone with him, that that ambience itself is a prayer. That just that that. That loneliness with him, that togetherness with him, that intimacy with him, that one-on-one, -on -one, that awareness of his presence, that, that awareness that the two of you are here, that awareness that he's there for you and you are there for him, that alone is prayer on his own. So that's why he said, when you want to pray, attain intimacy first. Make sure that you get intimate first. Make sure that you get him. Make sure that he's there. Make sure that you can touch him. Make sure that you can pr practice his presence. Make sure that you, you can you, you know he's there. So that intimacy, that you know, closeness, that privacy is the most important prayer. And when you know you can hug on him, when you know you can embrace him, when you know you could just hug on to him and with all your labor with all your travails with all your tiredness with all your heavy burden with all your burden with all your heavy loads and you know you can just put that head on him and say father i just why are you i just love you today oh thank you for just for even maybe you don't even need to talk maybe you don't even need to say anything just just fall on his feet just fall on his on, on, on him and just just let him be. We just let let for you to just know that he's there for you, that he's there for you, that he's there for you, that that is for is is your father. You know, just to just to acknowledge him. Just that one on one thing. That is prayer on his own. That is prayer. That is prayer. So <clears throat> the question that kids ask us sometimes, children ask us sometimes. And the question that uh, even unbelievers will sometimes ask us, that if God really loves, if God is love, if, and if God is all-knowing, he should know uh, what we need. He should know our, of our needs and requests. So why should we need to be asking him for things? Why should we be begging him for these things if he's God, if he already knows them? Well, that's exactly what God is saying here, what Jesus is saying here, that, you know, that is not prayer, really. Real prayer is what I'm talking about right now. Real prayer is this intimacy. Of course, that, you know, in that time of prayer and intimacy, 
you might want to share with him some of your challenges, some of your problems, you might want to, but it's not because he doesn't know them, it's because you want to talk it over with him. With him. And, and, and you, you might want to ask about some things, you might want to, you know, ask him to help you resolve some, some of the things, but those are not, you know, the things that overwhelm your prayer time with him. What really overwhelms your prayer time with him is that intimate relationship, intimate fellowship. That is what's supposed to be supreme in your relationship with God. So what Jesus is saying here is that when uh, without prayer, you enter into your closest, you shut up the door, then you just pray with him. Prayer, in this sense, is your fellowship with him. And you know it's in secret and you are in that secret place with him. He says, your father who sees all in secret will reward you openly. So this is actually also confirming that question we're asking. That since your father sees in secret, so he is in secret, but from that secret place, he sees everything that you need. You need. So if the answer to that question is if God is all knowing and if God is all powerful, if God sees everything, why does he, why do I need to still beg him and ask him for these things? So if the Bible says that he actually sees. So we know we should know that God sees everything. He even sees them before you come to that place of prayer. He sees them before you ask you to, you know to do anything about it. So he he cares uh, he sees and cares so much that it's not your prayer that is begging him to do that. But what your prayer does is that you it's just showing and demonstrating your submission to him. Your what your prayer does is so letting him know that he is your Lord, that he is your king. You are inviting him to be Lord over your life. You are inviting him to rule over that situation. You are inviting him to rule over that problem. You are inviting him to rule and reign over your life. You are inviting him how you are reaffirming you know, what he already knows, that he is your Lord, that he is your king. You are, you are reaffirming your love to him. You are reaffirming your you know, attitude, your relationship with him. You are letting him know Know that he is supreme to you, that he is there is no one before you. You are just confirming to him, you are convincing him again and again about your faithfulness to him, about your commitment to him, about your dedication to him, and about his lordship in your life. So even when you submit those prayers to him and you give to him those you know requests, that's what you are trying to affirm. You are affirming to him that you are the Lord over this situation, you are the Lord over this problem. You know, I you know I submit them to you and I love you, I worship you, all those things. So that, but what he's saying is when it when you come to prayer, your focus shouldn't be on trying to convince God to do something for you. Your focus shouldn't be about, you know, trying to say a lot of things and a lot of words and trying to be repetitious to him and telling him all these things that he needs to do, why he needs to do them. He's saying, no, your father who knows of your needs before you came to him. Your father who who, who, uh, who, who is aware of your challenges. Your father who sees everything you are going through. Come to him with the attitude that he knows. Come to him with the attitude that he already knows. You know, it's totally different when you are coming to somebody to ask, to convince him and beg him to, you know, uh, to, to do something for you. It, 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 then it's totally different than when you come to him and just let him know that, oh, Father, I know you're already aware. You know, it brings some amount of trust. It brings some amount of, uh, you know, faith. It brings some amount of reliance and, you know, so you are not coming there to convince him and to beg him for, for him to do something. You are coming there to really let him know that, you know, you are trusting him, to uh, let him know that you are believing him, to let him know that you, you rely on him, to let him know that he is your all in all, to let him know of, of his supremacy in your life. So, uh so that, that's what that's what it's supposed to be about. So he's saying, so when you come to, to prayer, uh, don't be using all those vain repetitions and don't be re repeating all kind of things and be, you know, letting, to, trying to convince God and, you know, let, letting him, you know, be, you know, be praying and asking and asking and asking for the same thing and over and over, and over again. When you do that, you are actually trying to tell God that you are coming there to use him as, a, as an ATM machine. 
Don't be using God as an ATM machine. And if he's not responding to you, then you are banging on him, banging on him, banging on him. You know, he knows what you need even before you ask him. He knows even if you need those things for real or if you don't, if you don't need them. And he knows that some of those things, if they are, they are harmful to you and you don't need to get them, I should think that you need to get them right off or not. You know, sometimes he knows that you don't need to get those things. And those things are not really necessary for you to have immediately. But, you know, sometimes we don't know the difference. We, but he knows what is best for you. He knows what is best for you. So your uh, repetitions might not really help in this matter. So he said that is, Jesus said that is what the Gentiles do. Gentiles are the ones who are more focused on their problems than on God. Gentiles are the ones who are more focused on, you know, just resolving their issues than, you know, than what God, what God's, uh, uh, what God's thought is about, is, is about that. So, because it says the Gentiles think that they shall be heard. By what, by, by their most speaking, you know, we also sometimes think that we shall be heard by our shouting. We think that we shall be heard by our much speaking. We think that the more we speak, the more we repeat, the more we do it, the, the more we are heard. Now, I tell you that I spend like you know a week in the presence of God. Sometimes, uh, you know, I do my solitude. I spend up to like ten, to 15, 14, 18 hours in the presence of God in a day. So people will say, so are you not repeating that way? Uh, what are you doing there? Is it not the same thing? Are you not trying to you know, convince God uh, by the quantity of your words to, 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 for him to do something for you? No, it's totally different, my dear. It's totally, you know, you could be with God in the presence of God for weeks and still not be a Gentile, still not, you know, you, because you are, you, you are, you no, know, being aware is you are not being aware of your problems more than you are aware of God. When you are in the presence of God in solitude, like for a week, you are you come to a place where you are more aware of God, of His presence, than you are aware of whatever problem has brought you there. So what I'm talking about and what makes you a believer is the awareness of God, that personal relationship with God, that building of relationship with God, that communication with God, that awareness of His presence, that father you know son relationship that awareness of him that consciousness of god but what did what is the problem with the gentiles is that they have the consciousness of problem they have not god consciousness but problem consciousness so the problem consciousness it means that you are being you know you are focusing on the problem it is your focus on the problem for it to be resolved that is making you to be repetitive it is your focus focus on the problem for it to go away that is driving you so your focus is actually the problem your focus is the situation but when you are, you are you, when your focus is intimacy with God, when your focus is one on one with God, when your focus is God, you know that presence of God, that awesomeness of God, that greatness of God overwhelms your problems, overwhelms your your situation. So that overwhelming presence of God, that overwhelming magnificent supremacy of God in your life, and you know in your interaction and you know relationship with Him, that is prayer. That is the real prayer. But you know the the situation whereby you you go to pray and you are all about problem 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 and you are almost aware of God you are only using Him to say in the name of Jesus so that is the only thing that reminds you of God that is paganism that is even that is paganism so that's why Jesus said for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking for their much speaking. You know, it's not about much speaking, really. It's not, you know, so, you know, that, that's what Jesus is trying to discourage, much speaking. And if you look at the church today, the picture of the church today is like, it's more like much speaking. It's much shouting, much, uh, you know, narration, much actions, much sacrifice, much uh, activity, much, you know, running up and down, much, you know, uh, attempts to be impressive, to to shout, to pray, to gesticulate, to do, you know, we are thinking that is what is really giving us. You can do all that, but the focus will still have to be God. The focus will still have to be that intimate relationship with God. The focus shouldn't be that problem or shouldn't be those situations that are overwhelming you. So, answering this question that I'm asking today, uh, and the question is, if God, the question is, if God loves me, he should take care of me without me asking him. 
if he is omniscient, omniscient or knowing, if he is, uh, if he knows about my my needs and even before I came, why should I be coming to him all the time with my needs and desires? Well, that is the point I'm trying to make. He knows, so that you should you should not be coming to him just for your because of your needs and desires. You should be coming to him because you that's your nature. You are made from him. And for you to be sustained, a creation, a product must be sustained by the source. He is your source. So you need him because you need him to even for your very existence and for your very life. So it is because they, that just like the fish is need, I mean, needs the water to, 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 to survive and to succeed. Just like the, the tree needs the soil to succeed and to survive. You, we also need him. So it is that awareness of the fact that I'm coming from him. Uh, he's, my, he's, my, he's my essence. He's my source. I need to be with him. That is what drives me to, 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 to prayer. Just because that is my most comfortable atmosphere. That is my most, you know, most, most uh, trusting atmosphere. Just like with the fish, the most comfortable and the most trusting atmosphere for the fish is the water. For the, for the tree is the soil. And the same thing with us is the presence of God. So I'm going to him because I desire to be with him. I love him. Those are the things that drive, those are the prayers that I, that are the things that are driving me to prayer. And those are the prayer, no points. Those are the prayer points. My relationship with him, my, uh, my interaction with him, those are the prayer points. My, uh, my love, my expression to him, my fellowship with him, my expression of trust to him, and my desire to discover him, my desire to know him, my desire to, Discover his character, his image, his um, characteristics, his his likes, his dislikes. Is uh, for me to also discover his plans, his strategies, his 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 desires for the world, his desires for me, his correction, his you know teachings. His, you know to discover more about those are the primary. Those are supposed to be the um, the most. Uh, the most important reasons why we pray. And those are the, the greatest meaning of prayer in the first place. So, but then if I do that, if I will seek him for who he is, if I will seek him for, to know him and his kingdom, then of course, he takes care of me. He knows and he hears my prayers even before I vo voice them to him. Now, my voicing my needs and prayers to him and my request to him is not prohibited. I could still do that, but that is coming out of my relationship with him. That is coming out of the fact that I'm expressing my needs and my heart and, you know, who I am to him. But what is, uh, what I elevate the most is that personal relationship, that personal work with him. So every other thing that my, what my requests are, what my, what my needs are, they are just the overflow of my relationship with him. They are overflow of my love with him, of my interaction with him. So they, they are not the things that drive me to him. They are not the things that drive me to prayer. Because if you are being driven to prayer by your needs, it means you are worshipping your needs. It means your needs are your motivations. It means your needs are your driving force. It means those needs are your Lord. Those needs are your God. It means that, you know, you are not there for him. You are not there to love him. You are not there to, to you know, to, to be with him, to fellowship with him. You are there for your needs. It's, you, it's, it's, you know, it's just like saying, you know, you, it's just like using prostitutes. You are going to the prostitute. It's not because you are committed to that prostitute. You are going to pr to pr prostitute because you need what you know what she can offer you. You are just going there to get what you need. You are not going there to build relationship with that prostitute. You are not marrying that prostitute. You are not catering for that prostitute. You are not giving that prostitute a home. You are not giving her a secu security that she needs. You are not giving her the romance she needs. You are not giving her the the you know the the covering she needs. You are just going there to, to use him. That is what our people have been relating to God these days. We are using God. We are, you know, relating to God as with a prostitute. And that is the problem. We should change the way we'll be relating to God and, and you know, the, the way we'll be coming to, God, to prayer and the way we'll be relating to prayer and our attitude to prayer. And, and not too many people talk about prayer like this. Most people are talking about prayer as if it is about need and about getting God to meet your needs. So, like, you will have turned God to an ATM machine, to, to Santa Claus, to Father Christmas. And, and that must change. 
That must change. You know, that's why Jesus was so strong about saying that is what the Gentiles do. That's what the heathens do. We shouldn't do that. So in my own, uh, you know, so in my own opinion, you know, we, we err, we, we run into error when we, when we, when we are, you know, making a God to try to convince him in prayer, to try to beg him in prayer, to try to, you know, you know, uh, uh, use prayer as a means of trying to, you know, make God be aware of what we need. No, we should come already knowing that he's aware of what we need. We should come already knowing that he loves us so much, which he cares for us so much. And we should come already knowing that he, 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 over, he, he is supreme over our situation. He is supreme and he rules over everything, including our problems. We should let him know that we trust him. We know that he rules over those problems. So we know that those problems are not, not a challenge. They are no problem for us and they are no problem for him. And that he will crush them. He will remove them. And even though, and, but sometimes in prayers, he, God wants us to act. Sometimes in prayers, especially when you are praying for problems like that Satan is responsible for, sometimes God wants you to use the authority he has already given unto us. That you should speak to the problems. You should, should, should speak to the sickness. You should speak to this circumstance. You should speak to them and rebuke them to go because he has already given you authority to do that. And you know, just to sickness and circumstance, uh, to any situation that is adversely against you, you yourself can deal with them. So you know, a lot of times we are asking God to do for us what he has already asked us to do. He gave us the name of Jesus so that we could use his name to deal with our circumstances. That, is, that name is authority. We have that authority. We shouldn't be asking him to come and deal with our circumstances for us. We have his authority to go out and use that authority to deal with our situations. That's why, and that, even looking at the examples of Jesus, like for example, when Jesus saw sicknesses, he was also always saying, he was always calling, uh, okay, for example, he saw the lady that was sick, he said, arise, take up your bed and walk. You know, he's speaking to the sickness and then, you know, the other situation, he's speaking to, you know, uh, the demons. He's speak, he just, you know, he's, he's resolving the situation because he's already having overwhelming relationship with God. He knows God is with him. God is in him and the God's authority is working with him. He just goes and speaks to the sickness. That's why when we pray, we command the sickness to go. We speak to the situation. We speak to sicknesses and diseases to leave. And because you are not supposed to talk to God to come and really move those things sometimes. You need to do that yourself. You need to do, you don't need to talk to God to remove the demons and the wishes. Uh, you need to talk to those wishes and wizards and use the authority God has already given you. You need to speak to those demons and to for, use the authority has already given you the name of Jesus for, to, for them to leave, to, to get out of where they are. The same thing with sickness. You don't always need to ask God to, you know, to heal you and as if he's not interested. God is waiting for you to use the authority he has given you. There's somebody that is washing me right now. You have the cancer of the cancer of the breast, right breast, or whatever, or growth of the breast. Use the authority has already given unto you and speak to that cancer like I'm doing now. So that cancer, I command you to go away die off, dry off in the name of Jesus. I use the name of Jesus to cause the cancer. I use the name of Jesus to drive out that cancer. The growth, any form of growth in your body, in your breast, in any part of your body, we command them to disappear, to dissolve, in, to be dissolved in Jesus' name, to vanish in the name of Jesus. You see, we are using the name of Jesus as the authority, as the power to speak to that circumstance, to speak to that situation, to speak to that sickness, to go. So, when we, you know, even though, even though you might still talk to God about them, but uh, you are talking to God, not begging Him, and not, you know, you know, beggarly coming as if, uh, you know, you, you know, uh, He's not interested in helping you. He has, He's interested because that's why I give you the authority to use to to deal with that situation. But you can talk to him because you have a relationship with him. It is not saying that we are not saying that it's prohibited for you to open your heart and your, you know, and your and share your needs with God. You can always do that. I mean, you should do that because you have relationship. But what we are talking about is that you should know that it is your relationship with God that is prayer. The ultimate prayer is your relationship with God. Just like I said the other day, you know, why would Adam and Eve pray? And they had prayers in the Garden of Eden. But because they did, but they don't have sickness there. So because prayer should it be about sickness. Why should they pray in the Garden of Eden? There were no demons there because prayer shouldn't be about demons. So why should they pray? 
But they, they didn't need protection in the Garden of Eden. They were already protected because pr prayer shouldn't be about protection. You know, why did they, why, why, why should they pray? They didn't need prosperity there because they were already prospered in the Garden of Eden. Yes, that is right. And that is a proof that prayer shouldn't be about prosperity. So why should they pray then? Well, you should pray for all other reasons that I've said. Yeah, and that's what we must correct in the body of Christ today. We are not praying because we need something. We need Him. It is not things that are driving us to pray. It is Him that should be driving us to pray. Relationship with Him is what should be driving us to pray. We need Him. We need Him. It's Him that we need. He supersedes all our problems. He supersedes all our needs. He, 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 he superrides all our needs. He is the one that is our Lord. It is not the, the, the prayer or the needs that, that we are there for. We are there for Him. Tiger Deer Press said, we have its authority to speak with to ch the challenges and situations and deal with them. Yes. Adewale Ojo says, God loves and cares for us already. Yes. You must trust him. But the way we pray sometimes is that we don't trust him. It's that we don't believe that he loves and cares for us already. If you listen to the way some people are praying, it's like they are trying to make God do something. It's like they are trying to convince God. They are trying to convince God to be, to be loving. They are trying to convince God to be caring. They are trying to convince God to, you know, to, to, to trust, I mean, to, to care for them and to, to love them. You don't even have an idea how much God loves you. You don't even have an idea how much God cares for you. But you, but you must not treat him like a pagan. You must not treat him like an idol. You must not treat him like an like ATM. You must not take him like a, treat him like a prostitute. You, he needs your relationship with him. He needs you to build relationship with him. He needs intimacy with you. That is the greatest desire of God's heart. Koye, Koye hi, Pastor Koye, how are you today? Koye says, yes, Pastor, he is our life, the reason for our existence. Actually, Koye, is that not, that's the way we were, we, were, we were serving God while we were here, yeah, Koye? When you were here in Russia with me. That's the only kind of God we knew in, during communism. And, you know, I'm sure you must be shocked with the kind of Christianity you met in Nigeria these days. And you tell me about that. I want to hear your opinion, Koye, if you're hearing me. Uh, you know, that, you know, that you know, is kind of, they have changed and manipulated Christianity. And Christianity has been corrupt. They've corrupted Christianity, unfortunately. Joyce uh, Arrow says, when you are in the presence of God, be more aware of him than your problems. Yes, so true. More grace, Pastor. Thank you. Ojekwa Israel says, Roberta, I believe, okay. Oh, sorry, that's not for me. That's not for me. Tiger Depra says, be more aware of God more than you are aware of your challenges and problems. Yeah, especially in the presence of God. Uh, Pastor Iron says, he knows what is good for me and I must believe that he makes things beautiful in his time. Yes. Nikki says, you spirit of destruction will put you out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> Temitokwe Aluko says, sir, we ask in the scriptures, I mean, we are asking the scriptures to ask, seek, and knock, and even go ahead and say, yeah, you have not asked anything in my name. Oh, yeah, but I didn't say you shouldn't ask. But I, should, I said that is not what should be driving you to God. You ask already when you already have relationship with God. What should be driving you to God is love for Him, relationship with Him. What you should, you should, what should be driving you, like in the Garden of Eden, it is not the problem that is driving them to God. Even the unbelievers, yes, for Gentiles, yes, for uh, people who don't know God or who are just coming to God, yes, because they are just new. But when, but you, you are supposed to be have relationship with God as Christians. It is our, our relationship, our trust in God that should be driving us to Him. So when He says to ask, 
This is not always talking about, it is not saying that's the only reason that she will bring you to God. It shouldn't be the only thing that she will bring you to God. You know, you, you know what should bring you to God? Jesus already told us in, in his model for prayers. He said, when you come to God in prayer, uh, we call it the lost prayer. He said, our father, that should be the prime, prime position you should have. You know, our father. You know, when you build relationship, when you have built relationship as, with, with, with the father, as a consequence of that, talking to him, pouring out your heart to him, you know, building relationship with him, with communication you have, then you could ask if you need anything, but that is not the thing that is, you know, but asking is not also, you know, when, the way I understand ask, it's not just asking for something that God should give me something, but ask in the sense that ask what I don't know, ask questions, ask for insight, ask for understanding, ask for the strategies, ask for wisdom, ask for, you know, what he wants me to do, ask for his plans for me, ask for his agenda, ask for his, you know, ask things, for things. You know, if, you know, for, for things I don't know, for things I need. But those all come as a consequence of the relationship I already have with him. I hope you understand that, sir. Tell me, talk about local. Legacy, how are you, legacy today? Yes, uh, legacy is a love you, daddy. <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact that you're calling me daddy, but I don't I don't use those terms because, you know, uh, that has been taken to the extreme in Nigeria. You know, let's be simple. Let's, you know, we're just friends. Jesus, if Jesus could say you are my friends, you know, why should we, you know, exalt people to the position of calling everybody daddy? Anybody wants to be called daddy and all that. I understand where it's coming from. It's like an expression of honor. But you could still honor somebody and just call him pastor or, you know, or just, you know, I, we need to change that emphasis in our, in our church in Nigeria, really. You know, tie to names and just let's be easier. Let things be easy. Okay. Oh, Timothy, I'm excited. Got it. Okay, thank you. Shioma, how are you, Shioma? I just finished reading your letter this morning before I started the program. It was a long one. <laughs> All right, Shioma is saying, Pastor, yes, Christianity has been corrupted, corrupted in Nigeria. Here we go to church now to fix our problems. You see, that is what I'm saying. That is exactly what the Gentiles do. Okay, you tell me, why do the uh, pagans, uh, even our fathers, we have been Africans, we know what paganism is. We know what Gentiles are. And why, why do Gentiles and pagans, our fan for I, I used to be like that. You know, in my family, we used to go to, we have the, we, we used to have a family God. We call the God of Thunder. And, we, you know, we used to go there when we know that the raining season is coming and the, and the, and the, uh, the God of Iron, the God of Iron. And then, you know, and, you know, we need, prote when we need protection, we need to go to the shrine to ask for that protection. When we need money or when t things are tough, we go there to ask for, you know, blessings. We, we, when we need to start a business, or we need, we go to the shrine. To, so if it's the same thing, we are going there, not because we love that God of iron, not because we love that God of thunder. We don't even have relationship with that God of thunder, but we go there as something that we know as you know that if we bring sacrifice to appease him if we do if we go there to uh, we are going there for our selfish reasons so that is if, if you say that people now go to church in nigeria to fix their problems that is paganism i, I don't know if i could say this enough that is not christianity this is what go study matthew chapter 6 very well and that is why for so many people, they cannot understand the Beatitudes and the, the, the summons on, on the mountain, on the mount. Because, you know, it's so difficult for us today. We cannot, it's, it's, we, we, we will be confused. We will be so confused, we, we will think that Jesus is against us. Because his ideology, his principles are totally the opposite of what we are doing today. We are not practicing Jesus' Christianity right now. You are not supposed to be going to church. That's exactly what I'm saying. You are not supposed to be going to church to feed. You are supposed to be going to church to discover God. You are supposed to be going to church to discover who you are. You are supposed to be going to church to, di to discover His plans and His ways for you. You are supposed to be going to church to be taught His ways, to be taught in how to 
carry him, how to promote him, and how to expand his kingdom. You are supposed to be going to church to, 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 to know him better and to know how to release him and to carry him and to extend his kingdom and make him popular and to, how to know how to reveal him better. You are supposed to be going to church to discover him in you, to discover his image in you, his likeness in you, and how to carry him and how to reveal him better. You are supposed to be going to the church to build a relationship with him and to have, you know, to, to love a name and to, you know, even if you don't have any requests, you are not supposed to be going to solve your problems. Even though problems could be solved as a result, but leave it that to God. If you seek him and his kingdom, all other things will be fixed. All other things will be added to him, to you. Even though you could ask those things, you could you mention them, but that is coming out of you are the overflow of your relationship with him. That shouldn't be coming because that is why you are there. You should be there for him, not for problems. You should be there for him, not for your needs. So thank you, Shioma, for mentioning this because you are really helping me to know the situation back at home or back in, in the churches so that I will be able to talk to it, to, to talk to those situations. So uh, Shioma is saying, Pastor, yes, Christianity has become, has been, has been corrupted in Nigeria. Here we go to church now to fix our problems. Well, I've just spoken about that. Nobody is talking about relationship anymore. We are now need-driven. Well, that is paganism. I'm sorry. That is paganism. That is just pure paganism. That's not Christianity anymore. That's not Christianity. Pastor Kemi Onadipo said, It is time, to, it is more of communion and fellowship with God in prayer when we have fellow relationship with Him. Yes. We express ourselves and he speaks back to us. Yes, you are right, Pastor Kevin. In that relationship, and maybe you could mention your needs, you could, but it is coming out of relationship. It's coming out of trust. It's coming out of faith. It is coming out of, you know, the relationship you already built. It's coming out of love. Nikki Okoro says, most pastors are preaching that one must pray extensively and consistently to move the hand of God. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You see, our prayers cannot, it's not really what is moving God. You cannot change God or change his opinion or change his mind by your prayers and by your, you know, by, by your fasting of prayer. Somebody, I know people will think, will say, well, what about the King Ezekiah in the Bible? You know, I don't think it is prayer that's really changed God's opinion. I think it is his humility that changed God's opinion and God's heart. I think, I think it is his humility. I think it is his attitude. And so, I don't think that, you know, that people are saying you should pray consistently and, you know, to, to move the hand of God. Well, there might be some truth in that, but that should also be coming as, a, as an aftermath of a relationship with God. That should also become... Okay, for example, you remember when Jesus got to the, uh, to the, to the tomb of Lazarus, when he got to the tomb of Lazarus, and what Jesus said should open our eyes to what you know, our relationship with God should be, what our relationship to prayer should be. When Jesus got there to that tomb of Lazarus, he started by demonstrating his relationship with the Father. He said, Father, I know that you hear me, and you hear me always. You know, he's talking about the confidence that he had in the Father. He's talking about the confidence, the relationship of being so sure that God hears him, and that God hears him all the time, and that now he will hear him again. So, you know, can you believe that how beautiful that is? In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of death, in the midst of, you know, death looking him in the face, it was, you know, you know, expressing his assurance of his confidence that God hears him about his relationship with God, yeah, about his confidence in God. You know, that, that shows us that, in, 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 you know, that is what is supposed to be supreme. Yes, even though Jesus also asked, you know, for a miracle to be done, and you know, and that is why the, the uh, that's why the, the resurrection took place. But you see, but that was coming again out of the relationship that Jesus already built with God. 
Let me open that scripture for you. Uh, it's John 11, verse 41. John 11, verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the, where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, you see, you see, you see. That is prayer. Jesus was praying, you see. But what was he doing? What, 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 what did we see? What kind of prayer was this? Father. It's Father. 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 In that word, Father, I see peace. In that word, Father, I see trust. In that word, Father, I see relationship. In that word, Father, I see love. In that word, Father, I see, I see trust, reliance. That's what our relationship with God is supposed to be. That's what prayer is for us is supposed to be about. Father, then he said, I thank you. Relationship. I thank you that thou art always hear me. I thank you, Father. That's what prayer is supposed to be about. And I knew that thou heareth me always. I know that you hear me always. You know, that is relationship. Relationship with God. Relationship with the Father. But because of the people we do, that are standing here, that they may believe that thou hast sent me, they then he speaks to the situation. He's not even asking God to, go, to raise the guy from the dead. He's not asking God for anything. He just spoke to the situation. He said, Lazarus, come forth, you say. Because he, that relationship gives him the authority to be able to speak to the situation. That relationship is giving him the, the authority, the confidence to be able to speak to his problem. That is how prayer is supposed to be. Because you are so indwelt in the presence of God, because you are so immersed in the presence of God, you are so full of confidence. You know that you can speak to any situation, any circumstances easy. Because you are so overwhelmed by the authority in the presence of God. That's how you should speak to sicknesses, to diseases, and to circumstances. Not begging God to do it for you. You know, he already gave you the authority to do that for yourself. I, I really hope you are hearing this. But Bola Luro says, reaffirm your relationship with him and about his lordship in your life. Thank you, Dr. Sunday Adelaide, for this great teaching. Uh, yeah, what are the other people saying? If you have not written your 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 comments, we are finishing. Our time is going now. If you have not shared the but the, the link, go ahead and share the link as well, and also tell me what your conclusions are. Tell me what your what you have learned from these teachings and what you think God is telling you through these teachings, uh, through this particular teaching today. Temitopo and Luko say that is the drive because of conf because of confidence we have in Him. We are going to him in prayer since we are born be, uh, be, of God because our fathers called him. Oh, I, I, that's a bit confusing. I don't get it. Shidi Obinello said, Ezekiah reminded God how he had worked with him in the past. That is relationship, you see. Nikki says, God said, my ears is not too full to, 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 that I cannot hear and, and then leave the rest to him. It is all about having a relationship with God. Yes. Pastor Irene says, Pastor, the problem is that people are not being taught about who they are in Christ. And they have not been taught about who God is to them as well. And the reason some of us pastors don't teach people this is because we enjoy it when people are depending on us pastors. Oh, wow, that's manipulation. This too will change because Christ is building his church. Amen. Gift Amos is quoting that scripture that I read about Lazarus and Jesus. Then he said, Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me, you say. You know, he didn't even ask for anything. And he said, thank you for hearing me. He didn't even ask for anything. Because he, he, I mean, that's relationship. He didn't even ask that God will raise him from the dead. They raise Lazarus from the dead. He didn't even ask for it. But he just has that confidence. And Jesus is our firstborn, you see. 
He is the firstborn for the brethren. He is an example for us. He shows us what relationship with God is supposed to be like. Before he lifts his eyes and still on the attitude of gratitude, this is high level of intimacy. Yes, that's high level of intimacy. Tom, Thompson Abigail says, some people don't believe in women's ministry. Uh, can you shed some light on that? Oh yeah, I can, but not today because today it's about prayer. I believe in women's ministry and I will go, I'm, I'm going to do a series on that one day. Uh, in our church, we have 50% senior pastors, women, 50% senior pastors, men, 50-50. Joy says, we are supposed to be going to church to discover him, not to disco not with our problems and needs. Yes. Erica says, we really need to go back into the mind of God concerning prayer. That is going to prayer because of our love for God, to develop and discover the image of God in us, not as we used to go, just because of our needs. Thank you, doctor, for this eye-opening message. Yeah, you know, we need, we need to reintroduce Christianity all over again. Nikki says, often we focus on what we want from him, from God, more than God the giver himself. The re that's the reason we are created in the first place, to be like him. Kunle Shadari said, Jesus said we should not be anxious about these things, about anything actually, that our Father in heaven knows that we need of them and he will give them to us. He said to seek first the kingdom of God in all, and all these things shall be added to us. Olayemi Success says, I think the background of many Christians in Nigeria is in the traditional religion. Yes. And that is what has informed us in the way we worship God today. And we need to bring that out. We need to push Christianity of those, you know, you know leftovers of uh, our traditional religiosity and traditional practices. Okay, Baba Tunde said, I have been better since I have been listening to you. Thank you, sir. Keep giving these values. God is using you to change lives and set people free. Timitopo Aluko is saying, but in asking for visions, idea, ideas, and all you mentioned, can't we keep asking for these things if they are not coming to us? Is that a petitious prayer? Um, no, it's you, you know, if you are asking God for uh, vision, ideas, and how you could best serve God, and you are not getting it, and you are not getting any answer, that is an answer on its own. That is God trying to tell you that it's not in prayers that the answer is. That the answer is in research. That the answer is in studies. So you, if I were you, you need to go and study. You need to go and discover it. If God is not telling you anything, if God is not giving you an answer, it means you need, the answer is near you. The answer is somewhere. You just need to go on, on, a, on a search. That's why it says seek, not just to ask. If you ask and you don't get it, begin to seek. If you seek and you don't get it, begin to knock. Lola Shorunke said, Prayers, prayer is about relationship with God. If we continually fellowship with him, he will enlighten us on how to pray. Kemi, okay, I got that. Lanon Adebayo says, my motive in, play, in the place of prayer is to develop my relationship with him. Yes, to know his plans. You're right his purpose and strategy that in order to accomplish his plans and purpose on the earth. Brilliant, brilliant at the buyer. You are getting it now. Jot Idowu said, culture and mindset is a big problem in Nigeria. We go to churches from Monday, and we go to church from Monday to Sunday for prayer meetings, 
but no skills and knowledge to accomplish God's purposes in our communities. We need more teachers on prayer for Nigeria. Okay? This is going to go on for some time. I'm going to keep on teaching this. Shuma says, My decision is to live by Matthew 6.33. When I seek him, everything aligns. Yes. Temitopo said, The relationship and confidence is the reason we keep going back in prayer. Right. Kunle or Degbesa says, It takes Rema to grab this relationship of father and son. <laughs> That's why we read the Bible, to be able to understand God better. Temitope again says, The problem about Nigerian Christianity and religion, religion generally is not how to pray alone, but the expectations, answers, and miracles. This is our mindset every time. Well, you guys, it was nice being with you today. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you are blessed. I hope God has God spoke to you through this message. Let's share it. If you have not shared it yet, let's go spread the word and let the truth set people free. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Bye. We'll see you tonight. There will be another testimony tonight. We will have another person testifying tonight. Blessings.